So Jessin Chosby is a French biochemist and international best-selling author of Glucose Revolution. She's on a mission to translate cutting-edge science cutting edge science into easy advice to help people improve their physical and mental health. Uh, Jessie is the founder of the wildly popular Instagram account Glucose Goddess, uh, where she teaches hundreds of thousands of people about healthy food habits. She holds Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics from King's College London and a Master of Science degree in Biochemistry from Georgetown University. In her first book, Glucose Revolution, translated into over 30 languages, Jessie shares her uh, startling discovery about the essential role of blood sugar in every aspect of our lives, from cravings to fertility and the excuse me, and the surprising hacks to optimize it while still eating the foods we love. And the topic today is going to be, of course, about uh, about glucose. And uh, as far as I know, a second book is also coming <laughs> in oh, May. Oh yeah, guys. Yeah. It's right here. I just received the first copy. Yeah, this is the Glucose Goddess Method. It's, can you see it? Yeah, it's that looks that looks that looks be beautiful you know i was so Thank worried you. about your name that i thought you know in the worst case scenario i'll just keep calling you glucose goddess <laughs> yeah it's perfect it's perfect i love it no and this book is beautiful so it's a four-week method to mm -hmm. incorporate the most important hacks into your life um i love it i'm very excited about it we'll get into it Yes, thank you. So welcome once again. Uh, and yeah, you know, I have a slightly background question. I hope you don't mind. You started Jeez. with mathematics. <laughs> that's, that's kind of, I mean, uh, of course, it's science and biochemistry science as well. But uh, you are in, uh, you know, nutrition by hacking right now. And that's, uh, uh, well, that's also, in a way, geeky, but still, yeah. by mathematics. No, why did you drop it? <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, I studied math because I just didn't know what to study at all so at the end of high school I was like I didn't have any passions I didn't feel particularly strong about any kind of job I wanted to do and so I got a really good piece of advice and the advice was if you don't know what to do do the hardest thing you can and so I was like the hardest thing I can do is math so well in my mind that was the hardest thing that I could do and so I did math and it was a really good idea because after that degree, when I finally figured out I wanted to be in the health space, you know, having that math degree really kept a lot of doors open. If I had studied, you know, literature or history, I would not have been able to then jump to biochemistry. So mm -hmm. that's the story. But I don't remember anything about my math degree or courses. Mm -hmm. Mostly partied a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, uh, studying in London, I am not surprised. Yeah. So the official name is actually the, uh, well, I, I probably won't be able to pronounce the whole thing, but uh, the, the life saving benefits of balancing your, your blood sugar. And since you're a scientist by definition, uh, or by education, <laughs> I want to start with definitions, and that's my favorite thing. Of course, we kind of know what glucose is about and uh, the blood sugar is about, but can you give us a little bit of this, uh, you know, uh, intro, uh, intro explanation of what we are going to talk about today? Yes, yes, yes. So glucose is the first thing I'm going to explain. So glucose is a very small molecule, and it's your body's favorite source of energy. So every single cell in your body uses glucose for energy. So right now my finger cells are using glucose to contract, my brain cells are using glucose to think, my heart cells are using glucose to pump blood. So every part of your body uses glucose for energy. And the main way that us as humans, we get this very important glucose is through eating foods, specifically through eating two types of foods, starches, that's like potatoes, bread, pasta, rice, tortilla, etc. And sugars. So anything that tastes sweet from a piece of fruit to candy to ice cream. So starches and sugars are how we give glucose to our body. And some glucose is really helpful and it's really good to, to give some to your body. But it's a little bit like when you take care of a plant and you know the plant needs some water to live. But if you give the plant too much water, then the plant can die and drown, you know? And so the human body is the same. If you give a human body too much glucose, problems start happening. And the most common problems or, or symptoms you might feel if you have too much glucose in your system are things that a lot of us feel on a daily basis, like fatigue, cravings, brain fog, 
maybe acne, eczema, psoriasis, poor sleep, hormonal imbalances. What scientists are discovering is that actually most of us have dysregulated glucose levels and most of us benefit from learning how to avoid those spikes and those dips. And then of course, you know, long-term, the more excess glucose you have, the more likely you will get type 2 diabetes. So mm -hmm. it's really important for everybody to learn about this and learn how to manage it. Mm -hmm. So we do need some portion of that, I understand. But uh, with glucose, the problem is that it also creates some kind of um, addiction or I do not know. They say that the, yeah, more, you eat, the, the, the more you crave. So how much, how much do you actually need? How much is enough? And can you survive? avoiding all of that and I have a very ulterior mo motive why I'm asking it I have low uh, uh, I, I have very low blood pressure and uh, a few mm -hmm. times that I've been on very intense um, well periods for example um, periods of diet not diet per se mm -hmm. but like detox avoiding uh, everything that has glucose I actually would end up uh, in bed and not being able to get up <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good question. So, you know, technically, we're able to survive without eating starches and sugars. And that's, by the way, called carbs, right? So starches and yeah. sugars, it's called carbs. So we are able to survive without eating carbs, because even if we don't eat glucose, our body makes it from within, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But now the thing is, especially in a female body, some glucose intake is quite important, especially for your hormonal health, for your adrenals, your thyroid. So it's not necessary to cut out carbs completely. Like I eat carbs every day. You can learn to eat carbs in a way that doesn't spike your glucose level too much. And I mm -hmm. think that's the really important thing here is that you don't have to cut them out. You can still enjoy your pasta and your bread and your rice and your cookies and your cakes in a way that's less damaging to your glucose spikes and drops. And so in what I share in my hacks, you know, mm -hmm. that's a really important underlying principle, which is you don't have to give up any foods. You can just learn some tricks to eat them without a spike. Yeah. And how's your blood pressure now? Um, uh, no, my blood pressure is fine, I guess, but it's more, it's always been on the lower side, which, mm. which is, uh, I, I, I'm just used to that. <laughs> that's that's my yeah. norm, normal, normal condition. I just know that if I cut out everything, I, I can last a week. And after that, I'll start. Yeah, and you don't need to, you know, you really don't need to. That's, that's, like a keto diet would be cutting out all carbs, right? And yeah. that's that's quite an aggressive, difficult diet for many people. Um, but for men, those kinds of extreme carb reduction seem to work easier for them in their body. But as in a female body, it's really not really necessary, um, nor is it recommended really. And about the addiction question, which I think is a very interesting question. So when we eat something sweet, what happens is that there's a molecule that gets released in our brain called dopamine. Mm -hmm. So every time you eat something sweet, dopamine gets released in your brain. And dopamine is actually the pleasure molecule. And so when you eat something sweet, you feel pleasure in your brain. And that's why it's addictive, because pleasure is very addictive. And that molecule, dopamine, it's the same molecule that gets released when you have sex, when you play video games, when you take drugs, like... It's a very core sort of ancestral part of the brain that can get activated when you eat sugar. It gets activated much more when you eat sugar than when you eat like starches. And so that's why some people feel like, oh, I could eat so much and eat more and more. And that's why also, mm -hmm. if you're tired, if you're having a bad day, if you're sad, I know, I, I know this about myself. Like if I'm feeling sad, I really want to eat something sweet because I know it's going to make me feel pleasure. It's going to make me feel a bit better. And now there's, a, there's another thing that's quite interesting. So when you eat something sweet, your glucose level goes up, right? And then it crashes. And during the crash, scientists have found that the craving center in your brain activates. Mm. And it tells you, Christina, find something else that is sweet. Eat something else that is sweet. So when you eat something sweet that makes a big spike, then you create this roller coaster that goes like, spike cravings, eat something sweet spike cravings. And so that's also something that's happening. I teach people how to eat 
those sweet and sugary foods in a way that gives them dopamine, but doesn't create such a big roller coaster so that you don't, you're not creating that sugar addiction in your body all the time. Cause most of us are on that roller coaster. Most of us would identify as being like addicted to sugar. Uh, and that's something that, you know, you, you can really help control and minimize with the hacks. Mm. So before we go into hacks, I want to ask uh, about the red flags. So how? Uh, mm. So I have a twofold question. One of them is, uh, how how does that express when you have that uh, uh, disbalance? Uh, but probably more than that, because you, uh, I, I think we all have some some idea what what, what this uh, glucose disbalance. Uh, how does it feel? But more than that, how do you know if you have excess in your body? Because you said that excess actually can lead to diabetes and. Uh, you know, if we are on the roller coaster, um, you know, it's uh, it it is a concerning news that uh, yeah. And so yeah. Th that roller coaster and those spikes overall they lead to increased baseline glucose in the body, and that's diabetes. So when your baseline glucose level in your blood becomes a higher than a certain level, it's called type two diabetes. But, you know, before it's diagnosed officially as diabetes, you can still be around here, have a high baseline, have these spikes, not technically have type 2 diabetes, but still start, you know, feeling some of the symptoms and slowly inch towards that. Mm -hmm. And even if your baseline glucose is low and is normal, those spikes can still have symptoms that come from them. And the most common symptoms that you feel if you have these glucose spikes are fatigue. So every time you spike, the little uh, factories in your cells called mitochondria, they become stressed out. They're actually in charge of turning glucose into energy. But when there's a spike and too much glucose arrives towards them too quickly, well, then they kind of, they, they break down, they get stressed out and they don't make energy effectively anymore. So you're eating all this sweet stuff that you think will give you energy, but it's giving you dopamine. And then in your cells, it's harming your ability to make energy. So that's one very common symptom, just being chronically tired, needing a lot of caffeine, et cetera. Another very common symptom of being on that roller coaster is the cravings and hunger thing. Mm -hmm. So if throughout the day, you know, between meals, at the end of a meal, you have a strong craving for something sweet or something starchy. It's very possible that that craving was caused by the spike from the previous meal. So those, I think, you know, the symptoms that most of us can relate to. And these are the ones that get better really quickly when you start flattening your curves. And then there's a lot of other symptoms that depending on your body, your medical history, you know, who you are, you might feel. So brain fog is a big one, mental health disturbances. Um, mm. So feeling, you know, extra anxious, extra, having extra episodes of depression. We know that glucose and mental health are very correlated. And then mm. hormones. So more and more studies are coming out showing the link between mm -hmm. too much glucose and hormonal issues like PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome, like not being fertile, like, you know, having, if you're a female, a lot of hair growth on the chin or balding. So glucose and hormones are like this. And then mm -hmm. long-term, you know, I mean, type 2 diabetes is probably the most common, uh, commonly known condition linked to glucose, but you have other things. So the more glucose you have in your body, the more likely you are to have Alzheimer's, heart disease, cancer, et cetera. So truly, if you just do these hacks and learn these things, even for your day-to-day, -day, you know, energy levels and to have your cravings, that's great because it's also going to really help your long-term health. So mm -hmm. it's like short-term and long-term. So I see there are quite a lot of questions coming in, which is awesome. I'll Let's ask one it. question first, though, uh, and then we'll yeah. go into, because you, what, so what is the correct way of having your carbs if you have to have, or, or is it still the best to just avoid it completely? No, not at all. So I have developed this concept of these hacks that are all based on scientific studies. That, for example, let me give you a few examples. And these are the four main hacks that are uh, in the glucose goddess method. So the mm -hmm. first one is have a savory breakfast instead of a sweet one. And you can still have carbs. You can still have bread. You can still have potatoes in the morning, but make sure it's salty overall. So make sure you're having a lot of protein in it and some fat. That's going to keep your glucose levels really steady. And in the book, I have lots of um, examples of recipes. Second important hack is ha have some vinegar before you eat carbs. So take a big glass of water like this and mm -hmm. put a tablespoon of vinegar in it. 
and have that drink it before you have any carbs the acetic acid in the vinegar is going to reduce the glucose spike of the carbs and two more i will mention at the beginning of your meals start your meals with vegetables so have what i call a veggie starter and this is amazing because when you have vegetables at the beginning of a meal the fiber in the veggies coats your upper intestine and slows down how quickly glucose molecules come through to your bloodstream. So that's a really easy hack that, you know, just add more food to the beginning of your meal. And last one is move after eating. So after a meal, move for 10 minutes. Your mm -hmm. muscles will soak up some of the glucose from the carbs and use it for energy instead of letting this big spike happen. Mm -hmm. And so that can be going for a walk. That can be, you know, doing some calf raises at your desk. That can be whatever. So those are really the four main hacks to start with that I, I explain in a lot of detail with lots of recipes in the glucose goddess method. Oh, that's, that sounds good. <laughs> so yeah. we do have a guest. Um, uh, Hi. Hi. With a question. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi. Okay. Um, yeah. I was asking about a uh, ketogenic diet. Because uh, you were explaining about the peaks and whatever and the mitochondria's problems. And of course, that before diabetes, we get to get what it's called glucose resistance. It means that there's a lot of glucose around and then uh, your brain, your muscles are not able to use them. And instead of that, you just go to fatty tissue. They always accept glucose, always carbohydrates. And then many times you get fat. I went already into bariatric surgery and I have then I have an hyperinsulinism because when you have this spikes, it's because when you're not diabetic still, your insulin goes up to be able to manage the amount of carbohydrates and sweets that come, even though uh, they don't go to the best places. So uh, the best for many people is ketogenic diet which is the lowest amount of carbohydrates. It's impossible to, to be zero everything has a little. And it's told, and, and there are a lot of studies that say that uh, the brain is able to work very well with fatty acids coming from the keto diet, not with glucose, and the amount is able to process to the brain to work. But I read, and my question is about that if you go a long time with a keto diet, you can harm your neurons. And that is really something that worries me a lot and to recommend my patients. Because if you have a long-term diminution of, of memory or impaired the best functions when they're working, is it true? We can cycle about keto or non-keto diet or what could we do? So a few things. So first of all, I, have, I haven't seen that study that says that no carbs for a long time is bad for your neurons. However, what I will say is that continuing to eat a lot of carbs and continuing to increase your insulin resistance, that's really bad for your brain. That's really the worst of the two evils by far. We know that over time, if you have too high insulin levels, that has a higher risk of leading to Alzheimer's disease in the brain. So I don't think you should be worried about like the reverse of it. I think the pressing issue is to make sure your insulin levels go down so that you're actually protecting your long-term health of your brain. Now, I also want to say something important, which is that you talked about two things. You talked about, on the one hand, <clears throat> eating a lot of sweets and starches. And on the other hand, the keto diet, which is zero sweets, zero starch, okay? You don't have to do th this or this. You can be here, right? Which is like, you mostly, uh, oops, my little AirPod, sorry. Which is that you mostly avoid eating processed foods, eating a lot of sugar, but you still, once in a while, whenever you want, you can have some pasta, you can have some rice, you can have some chocolate, and you can use my hacks to reduce the glucose and insulin spike that you're getting towards. And I feel like this is like a, a great long-term strategy because doing the yo-yo between like extreme and extreme, that might just get a bit tiring and just like not very nice. So have, have a look at my hacks and see if you can incorporate some of those into your diet so that you can keep eating carbs, you know, once in a while when you want them in a way that's less bad um, for your insulin and your glucose. But overall, the fact that you're taking this into your hands and making an effort to reduce how many carbs you're eating, that's going to be really helpful for your insulin resistance and glucose. And then last thing I will say, 
and you maybe already know this, but you know, it's not just about reducing just sweets, like fruit juices, granola, muesli, like a lot of things that we think are healthy are actually full of starches and sugars. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, thank you, Duca, very much. And uh, Bianca, you can bring up uh, the next question, uh, the next person. Thank you, Duca. But uh, I want to ask, uh, I want to take a step back a little bit because uh, I, I, I lo really loved your hacks. Um, I want to ask about uh, the hack number two about uh, vinegar and water. Uh, I know that vinegar can be uh, can be intense on your body. How to do that in a safe way, and how do you know if uh, you know if it's it's actually not damaging you? So generally, uh, vinegar is pretty safe, especially if you have you know a spoon of it diluted in water. Um, this is generally considered like a very safe food. A lot of people have vinegar every day, maybe like in salad dressings, you know, a lot of recipes have yeah. vinegar. But as long as you dilute it and you're not taking like a shot from the bottle and you're not using like cleaning vinegar, you know, for cleaning the toilet, but you're, drink you're having like normal vinegar, um, that tends to be fine for most people. That being said, like if it doesn't agree with you, if you don't like it or if, you know, you don't have to, this is just one of many tools you can use. And um, something else that has a good effect on glucose as well is lemon juice. You can put lemon juice in water before a meal. That also helps. It's not as powerful as the vinegar hack, but it, it's still, it still is going to have an impact. But always listen to your body. Or if your doctor said you shouldn't have vinegar, like, you know, definitely don't force it. Just do it if it feels fine to you. Thank you. Thank you for this clarification. And we have Lavina. Hi, Lavina. Hi. Uh, I have one question. I'm, I have a little doubt between uh, the glucose that we have, uh, the result of the glucose that we get from the blood tests and the result that we get from a glucose monitor, from yes. a CGM. Uh, because I saw big differences in myself. I tried the glucose monitor for one month and I had, let's say, big values comparing to what I had in the blood tests, although I did it uh, every day because I have the, the, um, the equipment at home. So I'm a little bit confused on how it works and which one is more accurate. Yep. And if one of them or both of them, or what can I use to understand if I have a problem with my insulin, if I have an insulin resistance or not? I'm so sorry that you went through this issue because it happened to me as well. So sometimes I wear a glucose monitor and it tells me I'm diabetic. Like it's bad. It, it reads very high value. And I got freaked out. And it turns out glucose monitors are not very accurate. What you should trust always is a blood test. So last year, just one year ago, I was wearing a glucose monitor. It told me I'm diabetic. I go to the doctor. I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I do a blood test and my fasting glucose is 87, which is totally healthy. So what I learned from this and talking to the CGM companies is that the absolute values are not necessarily good. What you can use on the CGM is just like look at the variability and, and focus on, on the mm -hmm. shape, you know, but always trust a real blood draw for the actual values. Those are accurate. And the reason the CGM could not be accurate sometimes is a few reasons. Number one, the CGM actually reads the glucose level between the cells in the back of your arm, like in the fatty part. It doesn't read from your blood. It reads from what's called interstitial fluid which has a lot of variation and can be very, you know, it can, it can vary widely. So in summary, don't trust the CGM raw data. Always trust the blood test. That's, that's the correct one. And I'm so sorry that you went through this. Okay, so it doesn't make any sense or I, I don't need to do a test, the, the one that uh, you drink a lot of glucose just to see if you have an insulin resistance or whatever in case I see that I have high. I think you should do, I think you should go to your doctor and do a fasting glucose test. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the morning. And if that is less than 90 or 95, you're totally fine. You can also do fasting insulin if you want. Mm -hmm. That's even more useful. And if that's below five, you're completely fine. So definitely start there and you might see that actually, you know, you're fine. Of course, if those values are quite high, maybe your doctor will then prescribe something else. But in many cases, you'll see that your values are normal and the CGM is just reading weird. Okay. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you, Lavina, so much. And I know there are questions coming in. So, Bianca, just keep bringing people up as long as there are questions. Uh, oh, yeah, that was Lavina. Um, 
you know, what I, I would like to ask uh, is a little bit about uh, psychosomatics, <laughs> because a lot of the uh, a lot of the biohackers or people who who come and talk, they they start telling what the symptoms are, and the symptom like being fatigued is is of course it could be linked to your disbalance in glucose, but it could be also linked to you not sleeping well and and other reasons. Yeah. So how do you know that you actually have a problem and you're not? uh overreacting and and that question was completely inspired by your conversation because yeah. you know there's this uh book i don't remember which book it is from but it, it has this funny line that i read the medical encyclopedia and found everything inside me uh, in in my body except except the delivery pains <laughs> so <laughs> How do you know that uh, the, the situation is actually uh, serious and you're not just fatigued for for like any other reason? Well, the thing is, like, of course, glucose is not everything, right? There's many other things that matter to feeling good to overall health, like emotional connection, sleep, water, alcohol, smoking. You know, it's like it's a very complex, very varied. But the truth is, if you have dysregulated glucose levels, you're not going to feel good. So it's the first place to go to fix things because most of us have these spikes and the scientific studies show us and most of us have these symptoms and you know for my readers and my community it's very clear that by using these hacks a lot of problems go away so you don't know maybe you'll do the hacks and then you'll still feel fatigued maybe you know maybe you're not sleeping well for another reason like uh, totally possible however Balancing your glucose to me is like the, the foundation in a house. You know, it's very important to get that baseline right. And then you can start adding things. So for example, you know, like I do the hacks, but I also have a blackout blind in my bedroom so that at night I sleep really dark. Like I have other stuff in my life. It's not just glucose and then everything else is magically completely fine. But it's a very important place to, to start. And I just want to answer a question that, um, that I see a few questions here that I'd love to just answer uh, verbally. Mm -hmm. So one question was, does this help reverse type 2 diabetes? So yes, these hacks have been tested in scientific studies on many people with diabetes. And so this is why it's so cool is because when you have type 2 diabetes, your glucose levels and insulin levels are really high. And in order to put it in remission, you need to get those levels back down. And to do that, the one of the most easy places to start is by reducing those glucose spikes. And so with the hacks, you can do that with relatively low effort. So yes, 100%. And I have a lot of stories in the book of people with diabetes who have reversed it with the method. Let me read you a cute one. Okay. I had type 2 diabetes. I had previously been told by my dietitian that because I have celiacs as well as diabetes, adjusting my, met my metabolism would be like adjusting the course of an oil tanker. But I noticed results with this method in four days. I continued beyond the four weeks and my HbA1c, which is like a measure of diabetes, dropped in four months from 10 to four. I'm no longer diabetic at all and I lost 25 kilos. So just to tell you, like, this shit is super powerful and super easy. And that's why so many people across the world are now using the hack for, for many health issues. Thank you. Uh, and that's your new book, not the one which was translated. Yes. <laughs> okay. yes, yes, yes. So we have Carla here. Carla, sorry for keeping you waiting. I hope you can join us now. Yeah. Um, we'll need your voice as well. Can yes. you hear me? Yeah, now yes. we can. All right. Nice to meet you. Um, I just wanted the one of the questions I was asking. So I'm a type one diabetic because I had my pancreas removed and I have the disadvantage of not being able to have any of the symptoms. So whether my sugar is high or low, um, if I don't have um, test regularly, I can't see. So I just wanted to find out from you, um, do you have any kind of advice on how to try and pick up symptoms if um, I can't <laughs> right now. Do you know what I'm oh, saying? So I don't know yeah. if it's like low and I've sometimes I've been as low as two and I feel the same as if my sugar is normal and the wow. same as if my sugar is really high. So I just was wanting to find out from you if you had any ideas. No, but do you have access to like a, a glucose monitor, like a continuous glucose monitor? Yes, I help? have. I have started um, wearing one of those and I am extremely sensitive to insulin. So mm. I now have a insulin pump because yeah. if I have whole units, sometimes a whole unit puts me into hypo. Um, mm. So yeah, so I, I have a, a pump that helps me um, with that. But I just thought maybe you could, you had some advice um, in your books or something that you would be able to 
be a little bit more sensitive to what your symptoms could be or should be? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. You know, nothing comes to mind right now, but um, I hear a lot of people with type 1 diabetes actually having extreme symptoms, right? Usually that's what happens is that they will feel really angry or have like big, like, you know, emotional surges when they're high and then when they're low, just feel absolutely horrible. And so it seems like it's more like a, more of an extreme version of what, you know, not people without diabetes would experience. So no, I don't know what, what I am wondering is that, well, you could try, and this is just an idea, but, and, and I'm not sure what your diet is like now, but what you could try is try incorporating the hacks and then try mm-hmm. to see like, if you feel any different, right? Like for one week, do these hacks that have been scientifically proven to keep your glucose levels steadier and see if anything improves, right? Okay. So, so instead of like looking for the bad symptoms, see if anything improves. Maybe you just feel clearer. You can think better, you know, just small stuff. And be a bit of a detective. Maybe that'll help. That's the only thing that comes to mind. Thank you very much. I appreciate your answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carla, for joining us. And Bianca, if there's anyone else joining, then please uh, bring them up. Meanwhile, I'll ask the logical question because you've you've shown the book. It's so pretty. Can you tell can you tell us where to because I I I got a a desire to get the book as well. Uh, Yeah. Tell uh, what's inside the the book because it it looks uh, colorful and oh, yeah. everything. there must be recipes and okay. also to get it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So this is what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Okay, the glucose virus method. So I'll show you a little bit. So in the first section, I go over some science about why we're even here, what's going on. Then you have a little workbook. So it's a four week plan. Okay. So for each week, you have a little workbook where you can write how it's, how it's going, how you're feeling. And then for each week, I introduce a new hack. So this is the savory breakfast week. So week one is all about breakfast and how to make sure you have a breakfast that keeps your glucose steady. And so I have loads of my favorite recipes in here. Mm-hmm. They're really they, fun. They really do look sweet today. though, some of no, them. They're not, no, there's one that's called the breakfast ice cream, but it's not yeah. actually sweet. It's a, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a misleading surprise one. So that's breakfast. And then we go into vinegar week. And again, this is what it looks like, vinegar. And so I teach you all the different ways of adding vinegar to your day without it being gross. And the way it works is that week one, you start the savory breakfast and you continue the savory breakfast for the whole four weeks. Week two, you add vinegar once a day. Week three, you add a veggie starter once a day. And week four, you add a movement once a day. And so it's all really just super gorgeous. And I had 3000 people go through the method and share their results with me from my community. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna read a few here so you can get a sense, but it's really powerful. And the rest of the time, apart from the hacks, you can eat and do whatever you want. So there's no restrictions. You don't have to cut out desserts or alcohol or carbs or whatever. Just by adding these in, you get a really big impact. So 89% of people reduce their cravings. 77% of people have more energy. 67% of people are happier. 58% sleep better. 46% see an improvement in their skin and half of the people with diabetes improved their diabetes in these four weeks. So it's very cool. And for the link, I'm going to put it in the chat. And there's a weird thing guys going on with Amazon right now, where there's like a weird person putting some weird comments. So just ignore those weird comments. Uh, You can order it. It'll come. It's this beautiful book. Don't worry about the weird scammer sending fake books. The book is so successful already, pre-orders that people just try to do weird stuff and just ignore that. You can you can pre-order it. It's safe, I promise. Thank you, Jesse. And we have uh, who do we have? I have oh, we have a few people. Uh, so let's since Christine come came in first, so maybe you'll ask your question first. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Hi, everybody. Okay, I wanted to find out if intermittent fasting um, was a way to um, help with uh, glucose balancing. Yeah, it is. So when you fast, essentially you're forcing your body to use fat for fuel instead of glucose for fuel. And so that is really good and it helps your body be more flexible and helps reduce your glucose levels too. That being said, what's even more important than the fasting is how you break the fast. So what is that first meal you have after your fasting? Because when you're fasted, your stomach is really empty. Your body is really sensitive. So if you break the fast with like granola, huge spike, massive, massive glucose spike. And that's going to have a lot of consequences. So it's really important when you break a fast to make sure you're eating something savory or salty. And if you can, 
start with veggies. That's going to protect your body from that meal and really help balance things out. So yes, but it's not the whole story. Okay, so something like a vegetable juice to break the fast would be awesome. It's better if you have the whole vegetable because when okay. you juice a vegetable, you're getting rid of the fiber and the fiber is like the, the solid stuff. Yes. Yeah. And that's the protective stuff. Got it. So better to have like, even if you have like, you know, 10 baby carrots or cher cherry tomatoes or like just some whatever, it can be any type of little vegetable. It can be some salad. It can be some leftover, I don't know, green peas. It's like, think of any vegetable and have that at the beginning of the meal. And in the book, I have like dozens of really easy veggie starter recipe that's going to really help you get you continue to get the benefits of the fasting thank you so much you got it thank you christine and actually on the uh, on the back of this question i want to ask uh berries and fruits are quite sweet so are they okay for breakfast or should we leave them for some other meal so they're okay for breakfast as long as they're there for taste, right? So the breakfast should really be centered around protein. So for example, you can have like some Greek yogurt, maybe with the berries to add some protein and some fat to that. But uh, generally whole fruit is completely fine because whole fruit has fiber in it and fiber is protective and it helps reduce the spike of something. The issues arise when you have fruit juice. So orange juice, pineapple juice, apple juice, those are no go for glucose. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that answer. And we have Cam. Hey, Cam, you can ask your question. Good day to you. Hi. Um, um, my question centers around, I'm, I'm type 2 diabetic, have been for, I don't know what, a dozen years or so. Um, and so your method, somebody already answered my question that uh, it does help to reverse or reduce the effects of type 2 diabetes. Um, the vinegar part, as far as um, I take digestive enzymes, which seem to help me my overall health. Does the vinegar work with that or replace that or how does that affect it? So it has a completely different um, mechanism of action. So you shouldn't be seeing any impact on the enzymes. Um, okay. the, uh, it might act, well, I mean, test it out, see the way it works. So the vinegar activates a particular enzyme called alpha amylase. And it's that specific yeah. enzyme is just in charge of the breakdown of starches right. into glucose. And so that's the one it has action on. Do you take, is that the one you take is the alpha amylase or is it a more general one? It's like a, it's a portion of the, it's a more generalized, but yeah, it's a, it's a portion of what I take for the digestives. Okay. So, you know, I mean, test it out, but maybe a more powerful hack for you would be to actually do the vegetable starter. So before your meals, have, you know, a portion of veggies, again, like some, some raw carrots, if you want to, you know, cook some broccoli or whatever kind of veggie you're into, that would probably be the most uh, powerful without that risk of, you know, um, interfering with the enzymes that wouldn't want you to. But you could also try and see how you feel, because for a lot of people, vinegar actually really helps them digest better. So it's a, it's a good test to do. Yeah, well, I, I, I wind up with, with uh, GERD. If I, mm. if I don't take the enzyme. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm concerned with taking the, the uh, uh, vinegar. In that <laughs> case, you can also replace the vinegar drink with a lemon drink. So uh, that's a, that's an easy one to do. Take a big glass of water, half a lemon, squeeze it in, have that before your meal. And that should not affect the enzyme. So maybe that's a, maybe that's a better one to do in combination with your digestive enzymes. Okay, and also cool. remember, yeah. And also remember the savory breakfast in the morning. Like that's very important. If you're going towards type 2 diabetes remission, um, savory breakfast in the morning with protein in it. At the beginning of your meals, have some veggies. Um, and then that should really uh, help and be new new friends in your life, the hacks. Mm. Yeah, what I've been doing is I've been making a, a smoothie that has um, yogurt, fresh fruit, carrots, celery, vegetables in it. So it's a mixture of, of fruit, vegetables with yogurt um, in the smoothie. That seems to help also through my day as far as energy through the nice. middle of the day you could even add some protein powder to that so you could get like some unsweetened protein yeah. powder to up and up that a little bit but that's great okay. that's wonderful yeah, yeah i would add some protein powder if i were you because you you can okay. you can never have enough protein in the morning you know sure. really keep your hunger level steady and everything so uh, yeah and the um, the post meal movement like even if you're just sitting at a chair you can do some some calf raises so you know if you're sitting like yep. you just you just go up onto your tippy toes. You guys can see, you know, 
<laughs> yep. You just do this for like 10 minutes. Um, and this is a really nice thing to do after a meal to reduce the spike and help your body soak up that glucose into your muscles and help with the diabetes. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. You got it. Yeah, thank you so much. And, you know, again, um, I want to ask a follow up question. Uh, so how is it, is it different if you make a smoothie versus a juice? Because you just mentioned that better yep. to eat. Yeah. Yeah. So smoothie is better than the juice because the smoothie keeps all of the parts of the fruit in there. But the blades of the blender, they go so, 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 so fast and they're so powerful that they actually pulverize the fiber particles in, for example, a piece of fruit. And so it's always better to have the whole fruit where the fiber is intact. But then smoothie is better than juice, for sure. And if you love breakfast smoothies, you know, as I mentioned to Cam, like, make sure you're having protein in there and some fats and it's not just fruit because in that case, you're just having a big sugar glucose spike. <laughs> well, the, all the good things put together and blended up suddenly become horrible things. <laughs> I want to ask one more question. We are going to be finishing right now, but I, I do want to ask that because uh, a lot of the people who got engaged in the conversation, they're already aware of their uh, glucose, glucose and insulin um, disbalances. How do people who actually don't um, maybe don't, don't have the, the glucose monitor, uh, how, how do they keep track that everything's okay or, or something requires their attention uh, without, without this yeah. uh, device? Well, generally once a year, your doctor should be checking your fasting glucose level. Um, so, you know, that's the first place to see, okay, you don't have diabetes. Okay, great. That's important to check with your doctor. And then on a daily basis, like even if you don't have diabetes, just check in with yourself and see like, is your energy steady? Do you have strong cravings where you walk by a bakery or like a vending machine and you can't control your desire to eat something from there? That's a really clear sign that your brain is activating in that craving center. Um, do you have brain fog? Do you feel shaky if a meal is delayed? You know, things like that. And in my book, I have the long list of symptoms. But things like that are really good to keep an eye out for. And then as you incorporate the hacks, try to see like if you feel any better. And in the workbook I have at the beginning of the book, I have a way that you can track the symptoms to see if they improve. And um, just like check in with yourself and your body and you'll start noticing a difference. It, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty visible, I guess, you know, when you're, you're connected to yourself and you're like, oh, wow, like I'm not hungry like I used to be. I don't have those crazy cravings. My sleep is better. I have more energy. So I think that's how I would recommend people keep track of it. I actually like your hacks for several reasons. And before I'll, <laughs> I'll ask my last question, <laughs> you know, one, one reason is because it's not medication or treatment per se, and you can just live like that without uh, feeling that, uh, you know, you're... Uh, you're doing something extreme to 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 change the situation. So whether your blood sugar is is good or bad, you can still do the hack. So mm -hmm. that's one thing. The other thing is, uh, I like that it comes from a French person. Being, <laughs> really? I know, I know how important. Of course, I know how important. Sometimes, like that, you know, food is occasionally a part of our lifestyle. So occasionally, yeah. you need occasional allow allowance to uh, to have that. You know. Uh, cinnamon roll or whatever it is or part yeah. of it right so so thank you thank you for that because it allows uh, it allows space for a little imperfection in our life um, of course yeah it's very important it's not about an extreme diet it's not about you know it's about just adding these hacks in and seeing how your body feels and how much better you are and if you're taking any medication or if you have diabetes like definitely check in with your doctor and, and keep them informed of how it's going. Like don't stop any medication. You know, this is, this is something that's really powerful um, and it can really help on so many levels and it's not restrictive and it's not extreme. So yeah, I'm excited for you guys all to try. <laughs> so, yeah. So thank you for, for this, uh, this twist to it. But um, what I want to ask before we go on, uh, before we finish actually. So those who are online right now, I want to do the traditional and ask you to leave a heart for my wonderful guests. Aww. And if you're going to be watching it in recording, do leave it in the comments below. And while you guys are doing that, I want to ask the question. So uh, book is one way to, uh, to, to try your method. Are there any other ways to work with you if somebody wants? Because I really love your style and your Thanks. softness and, and sweetness and you're such a wonderful person. So, 
if anybody w- would like to go deeper, are there any other ways to to connect with you and to work with yeah, you? Yeah, so my Instagram is is kind of like the HQ where everything happens, and that's Glucose Goddess. And then I think you know my books are really where to go. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a doctor. I don't have cli- you know clients or patients. Um, but really, that's the way, the way to go. And on May 22nd, I'm actually launching a really cool thing, which is um, Glucose Goddess Method Groups. So as a group, we're all going to start doing the method together on May 22nd, so in one month. And that's going to be all online with like daily videos and tips, et cetera. So if you're interested in that, just go to my um, go to my website. Uh, it's on my Instagram link, and I'll put the link right here and mm-hmm. here. And you can sign up to my newsletter. And so you'll see, you'll get an email when that comes through. Hold on, let me put that through. So yeah, just exciting stuff happening and you know, it's just the beginning. So I'm uh, I'm really stoked for all the fun things we're going to do together. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank, Thank you, you everybody Sina. who joined us in the conversation and asked the questions uh, mm-hmm. live. And thank you for being active. Uh, and yes, uh, Jesse, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure. And thank you for having me, Christina. It was a joy. I, I wish the best of luck to your second book. Uh, oh, wait, people can't see the link. I just put it, guys. Wait, can I put yeah, it? we'll we'll have them in the notes as well. And okay, it's perfect. Uh, Glucose Goddess. Yeah. You can go to glucosegoddess.com slash, uh, you can go to the email or just go to my Instagram, glucosegoddess, click the link in the bio and go to the newsletter tab. Yes, and, and get the book, you know, that's the best thing to support an author. Yeah. So good sure. luck with the launch and thank you everyone. Thanks, Christina. And see you Take soon. Care. Bye. Bye.